welcome to the latest edition of Inside Pass. We look back on a mixed weekend for the Irish teams in action in Wales. Ireland left the Principality Stadium frustrated, letting the game slip through their fingers, while the under-20s were also in the hunt right up to the last quarter of the game. Ireland women, however, kept their championship hopes alive with a hard-fought win at the Cardiff Arms Park. First up, we look back at the action from Friday night at the Principality Stadium, as Ireland put themselves in some great positions, but just couldn't convert pressure into points. Wales against Ireland. Simon Zebo waits, catches. Wales is 10 metre line and they're 22. Off the top, O'Brien. Zebo running the inside line. Kevin Toner right in the middle of the field. Options on either side. O'Brien, good pass from him. CJ Stander couldn't quite get it away. Advantage Ireland. Holds its line. Ireland take the lead. Ken Owens throws. Sam Warburton wins the line out. Ross Moriarty to Reese Webb. And it's worked because Scott Williams is through. Webb in support. Long pass to Lee Halfpenny. Halfpenny to George North. North is back with a vengeance. Toner again sets up the driving mall. CJ Stander against Tipperick. Another penalty against Tipperick. 13 out of his last 13. 14 out of 14. Ireland take the lead. Jake Ball again. Good Irish defence. Stops the, the lock in his tracks. Justin Tipperick. Wales keeping it tight. There's not many Skinny, options like of width. This is where the Ken Owens. The vision's got to be the run at the corner. Warburton. Jake no Ball. On. No knock Advantage. on. Advantage. It is a penalty Advantage. for Wales at last. And it is the kick by Webb to Halfpenny. Jonathan Davis a foot short. Advantage, Advantage again. Yellow card. Clearly killed the ball on the line. Johnny Sexton is going into the bin. Scott Williams running at him, or, or Jonathan Davis running at him. He wouldn't have been able to make the tackle. Five metres from the Irish line. Alan Wynne Jones. And the ball is on. Jones with the ball, it's there, North for a second try! Holds its line. Toner. Tackle is good, tackle is fair. And it's play on so far. It's there for Marmion. Sean O'Brien. Sam Warburton tries to grab the ball. Ring rose. High, just an high, tackle. high tackle. So an accidental high tackle. The penalty is still given. It's still a high tackle, says Wayne Barnes. Masterminding the Irish comeback. 15 points to nine. Ireland trail by six points. Sexton, the charge down by Falatau. Jamie Roberts for the line. Roberts! Lee Halfpenny. Adds the two points. Wales are over 20. Scott Baldwin. And hands away now, Ireland. Davis goes starting round the blind side. Half penny. Twists, rolls, presents. Jonathan Davis at scrum half. The captain. Sam Davis knocks on. The game is over. Wales don't get their bonus point, but they do have the victory.
Earlier today, we got the latest news from the Ireland camp at Carton House and spoke to Munster captain Peter O'Mahony. Welcome everybody. Uh, it's the uh, last match in the Six Nations against England this week. We're all very excited. A bit disappointed after the Welsh one, but we're all very excited about the approaching England game. Just a, a squad update. Um, Tommy Bowe has a suspected fracture of his left leg. Uh, he'll see a specialist today. He's back in Ulster and we wish Tommy a speedy recovery. Um, Johnny Sexton underwent a precautionary HIA at the weekend. Concussion has been ruled out and he's available for selection. Um, Jonathan went through all the concussion tests, the one, two and three of the HIA. So he's completely clear. Um, Conor Murray sustained uh, a stinger injury in his left shoulder. He's responded well to treatment and he's available for selection. Jared Payne, Luke Marshall, Craig Gilroy, they all played for Ulster against Seabray at the weekend. They've come through the match um, and they'll train fully this weekend. Um, Fergus McFadden will train with the squad this week and Fergus replaces Tommy Bow. Um, so that's, uh, that's the squad update. I'll take any questions. <coughs> Yes, he is. Yeah, Jared played. He played almost played the full match for Ulster, so he's fine. But y yet again, all players have had uh, a tough weekend. Um, our our match we played. The ball was in play. I think forty six minutes. You know, so it was a long match. So uh, some of the players will have a managed training week. Yeah, Connor's fine. He's available for selection. Uh, he, he's fine today. Unfortunately, a stinger injury is a, it's a peculiar injury. It's, it's kind of a, a numbness that happens on the pitch. And it, you recover quite quickly. Well, all going well. Ian Henderson had, had a, a bad one against France, but he recovered very, very quickly. Uh, and he was able to stay. Now, with Connor, Connor's such a, a very good player. We gave Connor as much opportunity to recover from the stinger. But as you all saw, he didn't recover completely, and we had to take him off. But he's fine. He's fine. Was there a sense that he should have come off a little earlier? Well, you have to give the player every opportunity to continue. And Connor, such a good guy, such a, a valuable asset to us, we needed to to allow him to stay on as long to try and overcome it. But it, as it happened, it just it didn't. He didn't get fully. He wasn't comfortable enough to continue. So the best thing to do was to take him off. Have you had any x-rays or scans on the shoulder? No. 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 And Johnny was talking about ice on his shoulder or he walked through the mix around. Is there any trouble with that? Or no, he, he's fine. He's fine. He has a, he has a, he has a black eye, uh, which is not his best look. But no, other than that, he's, he should be fine. Peter, how frustrating was Friday's match for the squad? Yeah, look. It's hugely frustrating, Barry. Um, just doing a bit of viewing over the last few days and um, taking taking a huge amount of positives out of because we we created a huge amount of opportunities and 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 just let ourselves down the last kind of percent or two, getting ourselves into good positions, uh, set piece wise, putting good pressure on them and and just just not taking the the final step, you know, and and the final percent let us down. So. Um, there's a huge amount for us to take out of it and, and kick on and move forward and build on and, and learn on. Um, but we've got to do it quickly because we've obviously a big test this week. What do you work on this week then to try and make improvements? I think you just you stick to your plan. Um, you kind of pull in a bit as a group and, and you listen to the coaches and you listen to their advice and, and we get our game plan in motion today now and we get out training and, and we kick on. It's you just don't have time at this level to be to be hanging around looking your wounds and 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 thinking we might need to change this or that. We we need to kick on with our game plan and, and, and stick to what we know we can do very very well at times. There'll be talk from pundits and the media about maybe changing this player or dropping that player. But as a group, as a collective, what do you focus on? You focus on you focus on your basics. You focus on the little things you get right. Your recovery over the last few days. Then getting yourself going again for, for training today and tomorrow and, and and these two days are massively important for for the rest of the week to fall into each other. So it's you just go back to your, your very fundamentals and your basics and 
and as I said, you you take you take what's coming to you on board with the review, and 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 you kick on for for a big big week in in, in an Irish camp and an Irish jersey. England have been incredibly impressive this championship and in the lead up to it. Talk to us a little bit about the challenge on Saturday. Yeah, look, it's, uh, there isn't a huge amount to have to be said. Um, England coming over to, to to potentially win a back-to-back Grand Slam and, and, and all that goes with that. But there's a huge amount of carrots on, on the other flip side. of I mean, there's, there's world rankings, there's... There's us wanting to do well for for ourselves and putting the jersey back in a good place, and there's the fans who 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 are so good to us all the time and who show up every time we're at home and and, and abroad and 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 are so good to us. As I said, it's there's a huge amount of play for to give back to them and and the people that are close to us. So there's, as I said, there's, there's a huge amount of stake. The Ireland under 20s were involved in an epic battle with their Welsh counterparts in a high-scoring game in Colwyn Bay. Let's look back on the key moments from that game. Television match official from the English Rugby Union. It's Ireland who will get us underway at Colwyn Bay. And it's great for these guys to express their, uh, their skills on a higher level. And Johnny Stewart at scrum half. Through the hands it goes. And in midfield is Kieran Frawley of UCD and Leinster. And Ireland look to hold on to the ball, but the penalty comes. Jones then on its way. And the flags go up and Wales have the early lead. And it's there for scrum half Dane Blacker. Kick isn't going towards touch. It's with Jordan Larmer. Full back played on the wing. He's great pace. He's almost away. Good pass back inside to Nash and Ireland. All of a sudden find themselves in behind Wales and they're going to score. What a terrific try. Created by the fullback and finished by Nash, and Wales are rocked back on their heels. But that was adventurous and accurate in its execution. <laughs> yeah. Free for Wales for an infringement at the, and I think it was early engagement from Ireland at that last scrum. It's there for Blacker, and now there's space out wide if Wales can execute, and they can. It's the hooker Tarrant who's in. As Wales through Conbeer have the ball again, and now it's with the out half Jones and backwards. Ireland up. And the backwards. ball is spilled, but he can hear the referee saying knock backwards. And now it's the full back Williams. And Wales are beginning to run a bit of riot here as Baldwin pops it back inside to Cameron Lewis. And that's terrific play from Wales, really inventive playing the game with their heads up and set. Ready. This time the penalty to Ireland as the referee of judges, Reese Carr, is collapsed in the front row. I'll give you a good look at it from behind the posts. And this time there's no mistake to get Ireland back to within two or three metres. They keep banging on the door. Conley carries. Really good defensive work around the fringes from Wales as Caleb Doris is the man to carry. Now Ireland, maybe seven, eight metres back. Jordan Larmer again. No change this time for the fullback. And the penalty comes as Williams, in an attempt to get out of the way, takes the Irish scrum half Stewart out. So then Johnston to cut the gap to four you would expect him and he duly does Tarrant feeds a full line out Tarrant get up to try and compete with Wales secure ball and it's taken by Kieran Williams and got a yard or two out of the Irish defence and Wales look to add to that four point lead before the break this will surely be the last passage of play as Blacker sends it to his prop forward Reese Carr Good hands again from Wales. Forwards and backs combining. And away goes Williams. Terrific try from Wales. It's the conversion to come. And over that goes. It's Wales 24. Ireland 13. Played. The guard were offside. The referee's going to come back. It was against Karen Frawley. Over it goes, Wales 
draw first blood in this second half. They stretch it out to 27 points to 13. McElroy goes for and finds Coombs and Ireland go to the mall. And it's McElroy who now has it in his hands and a good distance away from the grasping arms of the Welsh defenders and Ireland try to get that ball moving. It's going sideways. Use the five meter line as your mark. Now they cross it and head towards the try line. And it's McElroy at the back and Ireland are over. They're over. A meter short now, Ireland. Huge effort. Almost there. Despairing tackle comes in from Jones. The ball's available, says the referee. Ireland, there now, and are they over? They are, and it's Witchley, I think. After all that, it's Coombs. Tarrant. Both teams showing everything they have at it. And Wales have found a gap, but they're going to get in again. Controlled by both oh. at the back. And it's in the arms of the substitute Hughes. And Wales get a rumble on. And Ireland struggle to come to terms with the defensive effort of the first. And it gives momentum to Wales. And they're over the line. They just have to drop it. And they have dropped it. And they won the game with a big power play. As it is for the seniors as well. Has been since week one, of course. With the championship gone for the senior men. It's finished in Colwyn Bay. Wales... 41, Ireland 27. The Ireland women's side entered their fixture against their Welsh counterparts with three wins under their belts. And at an emotionally charged Arms Park, they produced a gritty display that keeps their championship hopes alive ahead of a Grand Slam showdown with England in Donnybrook on St. Patrick's Day. If Ireland can control the breakdown and get quick ball, I think they can do damage. Claire Hodlett from the Rugby Football Union is the match referee and Nora Stapleton has got this one underway and Ireland go towards Sophie Spence and they now put pressure on Wales here again and Ailey Sheegan with the ball tucked under her right arm Lindsay Pete there to help out as well Lindsay Pete charging for the line Lindsay Pete in for the try it has come for Ireland in the concluding minutes of the first half of this game and Ireland, well, certainly, it might have taken them a while to hit top gear, but they did so on that occasion. We're in the final minute of the first half. She pumps this one, kicks it towards the post, and that is a terrific kick from Nora Stapleton. And it's well taken there by the Welsh fullback, Dudgy Hewell. And she makes tremendous ground over towards the 22 metre line eventually. And she's hauled to the ground there by Hannah Tyrrell. But Ireland absolutely carved open there by the fullback. And the whistle has gone. And that could be a costly one from an Irish point of view. Lead the field, please. Bind! And Six. Wales and Kira Bevan in a good position. Strong scrum by Ireland, but Wales wheel it around and dive and short initially. But we may very well see the television match official. Here we see it, she brushes off Mary Healy, powers through. And as I said in the previous couple of phases, right back in the game at the start of the second half. And it is uh, Robin Wilkins then with the conversion, and it's straight between the posts. Bounds! Set! Yes. And Larissa Muldoon with the scrum feed. And now Ireland shunting Wales scrum. back. And here comes Larissa Muldoon now, got us that. Jenny Murphy has it. Jenny Murphy hauled onto the ground. Muldoon moves it quickly. Nora Stapleton moves it out far side. Taken by Hannah Turrell. Hannah Turrell on the far side of the pitch. Touches it down on the corner. And it looked as if it was all in slow motion. And Ireland with the try. A crucial score in a really, really tight game. For Ireland, Leah Lyons Good towards the front. Sophie Spence. And Ireland now coming for a... Another score towards the tail end of this game. Ruta Rally Rock! makes a couple of yards forward with that. Kira Cooney there if she's needed. Kira Griffin, but it's Lindsay Peters come forward with that one. You're and Ireland there, now look to try and gather that one back. Rock, no! Larissa Muldoon Lance! was quite content to try and gather it and kick it into touch, uh, which is what she's done exactly right now. And the referee 
has blown the full-time whistle. And uh, it's Claire Hodnett who has called a halt to proceedings here at the Arms Park in uh, Cardiff. And it's four wins out of four for Ireland as they've beaten Wales by 12 points to seven. Tom, there's an incredible resilience about this team, isn't there? Absolutely. Um, you know, great credit to the girls there. Um, it wasn't perfect today by any means. Uh, we weren't as accurate as we should have been. But um, you can't uh, you can't doubt their, uh, their their tenacity and uh, and their will to fight for each other. And uh, you know. Very, very difficult circumstances to play against uh, a Welsh team that were high in emotion, um, obviously with the, the tragic passing of one of their players. So, um, you know, for us to be able to handle that and, uh, and get over the line and, um, and get the win was uh, very, very pleasing. Sets it up for an incredible finale. Yeah, it's um, it's great. Um, you know, obviously, it's something that we were hoping for, and uh, and you know, and, and planning for you know to, to, to win our first four games with uh, with a big uh, winner take all against England in uh, in Donnybrook on St Patrick's night. So, you know, hopefully we'll uh, we, we're, we're not too we're not too sore, um, and uh, and sorry for ourselves after that really really tough physical game that uh, we can get ourselves ready for next weekend weekend. Tune in next week when we review the final round of fixtures from the 2017 Six Nations Championship. To keep up with all the goings on in Irish rugby, make sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram.